Hey, what's up? This is Todd with Shutterstock, and in this video, I'm gonna wrap up our series on the exposure triangle. So, so far we've covered iris, we've covered shutter, and now I'm gonna talk about ISO. Now, what is ISO? Well, ISO stands for the International Standards Organization, which is interesting to me because I always thought it was something like internal sensitivity of stuff. But the International Standards Organization are just the fine folks who came up with this system. When a digital camera sensor, which has millions and millions and millions of little receptacles that gather light, receives light, it creates an electric signal. That electric signal is then interpreted into your image. Now, the use of ISO is like taking that electrical signal created by the light passing into your sensor and digitally amplifying it. So you can kind of think of it like turning up the gain knob on your guitar amp. So if you turn it up, you're gonna get a lot more distortion. And that whole concept leads me to something called the signal to noise ratio. The signal being the light that's passing into your sensor and the noise is basically just the artifacts and things created by electrical things working together to create an image. When you turn up your ISO, you're turning up the gain of that signal in order to create a brighter image. So let's look at this graph right here as a representation of what your photo or video looks like. You have light up to this certain point, you have the light that's being exposed into your sensor, and then you have the little bit of noise that's being created by that electrical signal. Well, raising your ISO is increasing that signal and raising everything, but in doing that, you're also increasing the amount of noise. Now, some of this is a little bit overly simplified. There are some other things that cause noise, particularly in super low light environments. And it's a standardized system. On all cameras, you're gonna see these numbers right here as options for what you're going to use with your ISO. Now, one thing that's important to know, especially with your own personal camera that you own, is what is my camera's native ISO? So native ISO is the baseline for your particular camera sensor and camera system to create the highest, most detailed image possible. Going above your native ISO or going below is going to amplify or unamplify the signal. So for instance, the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4.6K camera has a native ISO of 800, whereas the Sony FS7 has a native ISO of 2000. So if you haven't watched my other two videos on the exposure triangle, go ahead and go check them out. But if you have, what do you do with all of this information now? With this particular shot, we're at an F4 with an ISO of 800. But let's say we want deeper focus. We wanna be able to see more things in focus. Well, what we can do is raise the ISO up to 3200 and then stop down our lens to an F10. And now we know if we do that, we're gonna get a much deeper depth of field. Let's say for this shot, we wanna do a rack focus, but we want it to be really pronounced. And here we have really deep focus with an F10 and we're at ISO 5000. So if we want a shallower depth of field, we can lower the ISO to 800 and then open up our lens to an F4. Now in all of these examples, I used a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second. And that's because I was shooting at 24 frames per second for my frame rate. And like I said, you always wanna use double your frame rate for the most normal looking motion blur. So it's important to know the exposure triangle and how one piece of it affects the others and the various side effects that each one has. So I hope you found these videos helpful. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.